Hey everyone, my name is Richard, and on this channel I try to give you tips, tricks, advice, and how-tos on travel and outdoor content, and today I just wanted to cover some of the known and maybe lesser known phrases of the outdoor industry. For those of you who have been in the outdoor industry or have been outdoorsy for some time, you've probably heard most of these phrases, but today, for both my amusement and yours, I wanted to cover the what and the why. So here are six outdoorsy phrases, adages, and idioms that you should probably know. Number one has to do with footwear, and that is a pound on your feet is equal to five pounds on your back, and it all has to do with how heavy your footwear is. The idea being that if you're wearing heavy, burly, leather hiking boots, your legs are going to be working a lot harder than if you were wearing a pair of light hikers or maybe even trail runners. And because you're exerting more energy with every footstep and the constant pounding from those heavier boots, that energy is going to travel up your legs to your glutes and result in lower back pain. Essentially, because of the way the muscles in your legs and glutes and lower back work, that unintentional weight on your feet can have adverse effects on the muscles in your lower back. This is one of the reasons why you see so many long distance through hikers ditch their traditional hiking boots and opt for a lighter weight trail runner instead. Phrase number two is cotton kills. Now, I covered this in my video about outdoor materials, but the basis of this phrase is that cotton is a terrible technical fabric. It doesn't breathe well, it doesn't dry quickly, and if you sweat in it, it's going to smell terrible. This is why so many pieces of outdoor clothing are made from materials like nylon and polyester and bamboo, hemp, and merino wool. Cotton is just easier and much cheaper to produce, which is why you see it in more everyday items. But the gist is, if you go on a hike wearing cotton socks, cotton underwear, and a cotton t-shirt, you're gonna feel like you're dying. Next is phrase number three. The lighter it is, the more expensive it's going to be. Now, I think I talked about this in my video about why outdoor gear is so expensive, but the phrase comes down to three simple things, design, materials, and construction. First, you have to put a lot of hours of thought, research, and development in just to shave off a few ounces of an item. So, because it takes a little longer to design, it's going to cost a little more. Second, the materials used to make that item so light are probably either premium materials or trademark formulas, and again, there's a cost to that. And lastly, you have to be extremely precise when constructing these items so they continue to be as light as possible. And this often means either developing or purchasing very specific machines to construct these items or hiring highly skilled craftsmen to create them, all of which adds to the overall end cost. So yes, the lighter an item is, the more it's going to cost. Phrase number four, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Now, this phrase is typically attributed to Scandinavian countries like Norway, Iceland, and Sweden, who go through pretty extreme weather patterns, especially in winter. What I like about this motto is that it almost has two meanings. The first, probably proper meaning, and the second, more philosophical one. The first, and I'm sure actual meaning, is that you can enjoy the outdoors no matter what the temperature or weather if you have the right clothing for it. Extreme colds, heavy snowfall, and constant rain don't have to ruin your day if you have the type of items that are built for it. So, with the right waterproof shoes and jacket, insulation, hats, gloves, scarves, and what have you, you can make any adventure enjoyable. The second meaning, which I'm probably digging a little bit for, is the first part of that phrase. There is no bad weather, and this couldn't be more true. Weather is neither bad nor good, it simply is. Weather is only good or bad based on how much it inconveniences us. Phrase number five is leave no trace, and this is probably the most important of these adages and the one you should never fail to practice. In order to maintain the beauty and the pristine look of the outdoors, you must pick up after yourself. This is not just for you, but for anyone who comes after you who wishes to enjoy the outdoors in the same way you did. You might also hear phrases like leave only footprints and take only memories or take only photographs, but the importance remains the same. 
please, please, please clean up after yourself so that you and others can continue to enjoy these outdoor spaces. And if you have room in your pack and want to be extra awesome, pick up others' trash that you might find along the way. And the sixth and final phrase is right to roam, also known as freedom to roam or every man's right. This is my favorite outdoor motto, and it comes to us from the British Isles. It exemplifies the written and oftentimes unwritten law that it is the general public's given right to be able to access both public and privately owned land for exercise and recreation. This means that anyone can move across land as needed as long as they aren't being destructive to the land or its inhabitants and are practicing leave no trace principles. This is why so much of the United Kingdom's countryside is marked with footpaths leading to unlocked gates. The idea is you cross on the footpath, you come to the gate, go through the gate, close it behind you, and keep going. Enjoying open land is about respecting the people, plants, and animals that call it home. So as long as you're doing that, continue to enjoy your right to roam. I hope you enjoyed that list, and I hope you share these practices. And if any more come to mind, just leave them in the comments below. I want to thank you again for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and if you find this content useful, please consider subscribing. And as always, I want to wish you all the best on your next adventure.